Well, I didn't expect to see this GMK Tech design to return. The M6 Ultra is the successor to the M6 Mini PC we looked at last year, and on the outside, not much has changed. But on the inside, it gets a nice CPU upgrade. Oh yeah. It's now gone from the AMD Ryzen 5 6600H to the 7640HS. The number of CPU cores remains the same, although they are newer and faster, as is the new Radeon 760M graphics, which replaces the Radeon 660M previously. The M6 Ultra is a fully plastic box, it's reasonably solid in the hands, and features a pretty unique aesthetic. Tired of red power buttons? Me too. So, here's a green one. Whoa. Jim Ktech is one of the few brands selling most of the Mini's bare bones, and the M6 Ultra starts at $260 US dollars, going up all the way to $390 for the 32GB RAM, 1TB SSD pre-build on the official website. That puts it right in the firing line of the Mini's forum UM760 Slim, the only competitor we've looked at with the same CPU. Included for the cache is a nice and compact 19 volt 120 watt power supply, HDMI cable, and VESA mount. On the front we have a CMOS reset, 3.5mm audio jack, USB 4 40 gigabit supporting power and display, which would have been better to have on the back. Next to it we have dual USB type A 10 gigabit. Jim Ktech has thrown in a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6C in the M6 Ultra for wireless and Bluetooth. The top USB Type A port on the back is USB 2, the bottom port is 10 gigabit. There's also DisplayPort, HDMI, and dual 2.5 gigabit LAN included. Opening the previous M6 was pretty easy, and the Ultra is exactly the same. Rip off the top lid, remove the four screws, and then lift the SSD and RAM core. Dual 2280M.2 Gen 4 X4 slots are included, although the pre-bundled NVMe drive is only Gen 3. For the memory, GM Ktech includes DDR5 4800. This CPU maxes out at DDR5 5600, so we'll see how much of a difference it makes against the Mini's Forum competition. If you get the pre-build over the bare bones, Windows 11 Pro will be pre-installed on the SSD, and the malware scan came back clear. I also test Ubuntu, and it works fine. Alright, let's hit the benchmarks and see how the M6 Ultra compares against the Mini's Forum UM760 with the same CPU and faster RAM. Also, might as well see how much better it is against the 6600H found in last year's M6. Starting with a Cinebench single core CPU test, the M6 Ultra is slightly behind the Mini's Forum, but it's no big difference. And you can see the 7000 series chip had a large boost in single core performance over the 6600H. The Mini's Forum is again ahead in CPU multi-core. Not a big difference, especially if we compare the performance mode on the M6 Ultra. The Mini's Forum is under 3% in front. There's also a decent increase in performance over the 6600H. Geekbench single core shows nearly identical results between the two Minis, and they're doing far better than the 6600H. In multi-core, the M6 Ultra is very close to its rival, with a decent improvement over last gen. The short H.264 CPU video encoding test puts the Mini's Forum in front again, but only by a little bit when performance mode is used on the M6 Ultra. There's a significant 20 second reduction in encoding this video compared to the 6600H. In the longer AV1 encoding test, the Mini's Forum has a bigger lead while the 6600H takes over 100 seconds extra to complete the task. Now we throw the workload onto the iGPU, a feature unsupported last gen. The two minis are practically the same. Onto the AI CPU test. I don't have the data for the minis forum, but compared to the 6600H, the M6 Ultra does much better. Taking the same workload and throwing it on the iGPU, and the M6 Ultra is far ahead of the previous gen. For the 3 d Mark graphics benchmark, there's virtually no difference between the two minis, but there's a lot of improvement over the previous gen 6600H. The 7640HS is 34.5% faster in Firestrike DX11 benchmark, 51% in TimeSpy DX12, and 50.5% in the newest Steel Nomad Lite graphics test. A very impressive Genon Gen improvement. 
The benchmark numbers show that the slower RAM doesn't make much difference for this iGPU in 3 d Mark, and overall it performs close to the Radeon 680M. That means pretty good performance for the popular eSports titles. You won't get a great experience from modern AAA games at 1080p medium natively rendered, but some older ones will play okay. And of course, dropping the detail to low or adding upscaling will increase the frame rate. The latest performance heavy emulators work pretty well at 1080p. An option for playing games on this Mini is to use an eGPU with a USB 4 port, and my test worked fine. The M6 Ultra is nothing amazing for compiling code, but it's not too far off the older generation i7 and i9 chips. Adobe Photoshop performance is really good, only coming in a bit behind the 8-core 16-thread variants. The Adobe Premiere result is great and beats a couple of the 8-core minis here that underperformed in this benchmark. Anyway, 4K editing is possible, but export times will be longer than the 8-core minis. The included TWSC NVMe SSD is not fast, it sits near the middle of the chart in the storage benchmark. Cooling for the SSD is good, and it's not going to thermal throttle. Bluetooth range is around average, and similar to the Mini's forum UM760. There were no dropout or latency issues with Wi-Fi at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. The Mini's idle power draw from the wall sitting on the Windows desktop isn't great at 12 watts and higher than the Mini's forum. That being said, it pulls less maximum power in both its power modes than the UM760, even if CPU performance is a bit worse. CPU temp maxed out at 90C and 93 with a performance mode enabled. This closely matches up with the Mini's forum unit. Fan noise is pretty average with balance mode and goes up to the same level as the Mini's forum UM760 in performance. Neither is great, but balance mode is my recommendation. The M6 Ultra is smack bang in the middle for volume and similar to many mini PCs on the market. To enter the BIOS, use the delete key on startup. The main screen allows you to select the power mode. In advanced, you'll find the commonly sought options pinned at the top. GFX configuration allows you to set the VRAM limit, which is 3GB by default. Alright, let's summarize with a mini PC checklist. The M6 Ultra is made of plastic, the build quality is decent. I'm glad to see a compact power supply is included. While there's only one USB-C port, it's USB 4 and does support power delivery and display. This is another Mini that doesn't max out the memory speed, but it didn't affect the benchmarks in a meaningful way. The M6 Ultra ticks most boxes, or circles in this case, with a second column. While idle fan noise isn't bad, it is above most other Minis. The price is competitive, and GMK Tech does offer driver and OS downloads for its mini PCs, which are found easily enough on the official website. BIOS updates are also available, though the link is not easy to find, so I've put it in the video description. There's a standard one year warranty, and load fan noise is okay in balance mode. I was curious if the GMK Tech M6 Ultra could hold up against the Minis Forum UM760, and now I have the answer. It's pretty similar, and which one to get will come down to price and features. And if you want more performance, and even more features, check out my review of the GMK Tech K12 Mini PC right here. Cheers!